Hello, hello, and welcome to the Introverted Manager. Today I will be talking about storing images inside Power BI model. Have you ever seen this symbol when your report tries to retrieve image from the internet and unable to do so and therefore you see this? If you did, this video is for you. Let's dive right in. Okay. First and foremost, let me tell you, there are two ways to transform images to base64. One is manual. Basically, you can go online, find website which does the transcoding. For example, this one, I just took the first result from the search image. Manually upload the file and it doesn't matter which one encode to base64 and put it manual into Power BI. This is the manual way. There is also automatic way in Power BI. It can do it for us with some M code involved, of course. So let's first do a walkthrough the automatic way. And then if you want to do it by hand, I will show you how to do it by hand. So let's switch back to Power BI and let's do a walk through the function uh, written in M, of course, that does the transformation. First and foremost, this function takes two fields as an input. First one in bi is binary content of the image and don't worry about that, Power BI will provide it for you and the second one, file extension. Same, don't worry about it. Power BI will provide you with that. So we take those two fields as an input. First thing that I do is I remove leading zero for the extension, dot, back. I remove that dot because we don't need it for base64. And then I lowercase the extension just to keep it unified because sometimes you will see it can be different. The next thing is that we need to make MIME type. MIME type tells Power BI that it's an image and format of the image. So Power BI knows how to render it correctly. It's a specific string, specific for Base64 format, which you can see here data, image, extension, base64. And then we will have our long, long, long string representing the image. And then we combine all together. So that mime type and the image string. And we return all of that combined. So this is the M code. Now let's go to the transformation itself. What you can do here, and I guess it's the easiest, is you can put all of the images that you want to transform and store within the model into the same folder. And then ask for BI to load that folder. That's, that's the easiest. What you will be provided with after that is that content column, which is a binary representation of those images. That's what we need. That's what, we, what um, the function expects as one of the inputs. And another column that you will get is an extension column. Again, the one that we need. Once you do that, make sure that you filter out everything that uh, isn't supposed to be there. As you can see here, I have here two files that are not images. Those are the files, hidden files generated by the Windows and Mac OS. I don't need them and I don't want Power BI to spend time transforming those files into base64. So make sure to filter those out and leave only images. Once you do that, 
you have to go to add column and invoke custom function. Press invoke custom function. Once you do that, and I already have it here, but for you, I will do it from scratch. You specify how your column will be called and you choose our M function. Here for image binary content, it will automatically select the content because it's the only one that is binary. For a file extension, you have to choose it manually. So I'm switching to column name and here I'm choosing extension. And once you do, you can click OK and you can see you have base64 string for your images made directly in Power BI and by Power BI. I will delete the second one because of course I don't need duplicates. Just in case, always a good idea to specify data types so Power BI doesn't guess, which I did here. And once you load your images, make sure to deselect include in the wrapper to refresh. Once they're loaded into the model, I guess you don't want them or reload every time. Probably those images are static unless they aren't, but if it's just an icons, then they're probably static. So once you load them once, you transform them to base64 once, make sure to exclude those from report refresh. So it doesn't spend time on loading those and transforming those every damn time. Once we're finished with that, we can uh, apply and load those images in the model. And let's see how it looks like. And that's what you will see for some of the images. Can you see that? There are issues. There are clearly some issues here. Some icons are displayed correctly, but some images are cut. And that's actually a limitation of Power BI because the text uh, column or text field is limited to 32,000 characters, which means it can only store images up to certain size. And therefore, it works for smaller images. Specifically, it works well for icons. The thing is, when you transform image to text, the more colors or color depths and colors and different objects your image has, the more character it needs to be represented or it will be transformed in more characters. The bigger the resolution is, again, it will be transformed into more characters or it will take more characters. The bigger the size of the image is, the more characters it requires to be stored as text. And therefore, as you can see, even though Power BI received full images as an input, while transforming them into Base64, it was only able to store part of the images if the image goes above the threshold. So you will see some images cut. That's why I usually use it for icons. And for example, let's go to some website that uh, transforms images to base64 to see how much each image takes. And I will take, oh, here I have website already, but let me choose some picture. And here I have a few images prepared already as an example. This one is from the game that I'm currently playing. If you haven't played Helldivers 2, highly recommend. And 
yes, let's select this image and try to convert it to base64. We did. We can scroll down and see how many characters it takes. A lot of characters. And let me copy it into, let's say, Notepad. Ooh, we have something here. As you can see, this image in base64 shows up as 146,000 characters, which is way above the threshold for Power BI. The threshold is 32,000 with something. Therefore, of course, Power BI is unable to store full image inside its model. Now, I promised you the manual way to show you how to do it manually. You can do that too. You don't have to have M function and folder, etc. You can do it manually. What you do is you go to search engine, you type base64 online converter, you select an image, you encode it into base64, and if your converter has this option, select data your URL, because base64 images have to have this MIME type in front before the string starts. It's important to have it. If your converter doesn't provide it, you have to type it yourself. Data, image, file format, in our case it's back, and base64, and then you have the string. And then in Power BI, you can make new table and put it there. Let's copy it here. As you can see, it's not possible because this image takes too much space. But once again, as I said, it works really well for smaller icons. And you've seen me using this technique in my other report, in one of my previous videos, days lived versus remaining. If you haven't seen this video, check it out. It was a really personal one. Let's briefly have a look how it worked in days lived versus remaining. I used manual approach in this one. So let's have a look. Basically here I have or all of the icons that you see for the most part are stored as base64 inside Power BI model. For example, I use them here for this slicer for male and female icons. If we go to custom uh, visualization options for images, I use sex icons measure. If we look at the measure itself, here you can see that it's a switch statement which takes slicer selection and if it's male or female, it looks up icon from icons table for that sex. And if we go into the table itself, here you can see multiple icons that I have stored here and their base64 representation for strings. And if we switch to another page I did here, here you can see table with base64 column and Power BI renders them as images. Just make sure that you go to column tools and for data category, you select image URL. So Power BI knows that it, that text field is actually an image and renders it as an image. Now let's talk about performance considerations of this approach. First and foremost, personally, I usually use it just for small icons or smaller images. The thing is, as I mentioned in my previous videos, Power BI stores data in memory, 
which means if you have a lot of images, you will use more RAM. That's first. Second, uh, the more images you store inside Power BI model, the bigger your model is. And Power BI has limits of how big this model can be. Then, again, the bigger your images are, the more time Power BI needs to decode those images from text back to binary format, back to image, and time to display it. If you have a lot of those images and the size is quite big, therefore it will take more time to render your report, which probably not the user experience that you want. Therefore, myself, I reserve this approach for smaller icons, which I would like to use across reports, or some smaller images which are crucial for the report. I hope you use this simple technique in your poor BI reports. That's all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next one.